The Doctor's 500-year diary has this to say about the Doomsday Contract. The extraordinary story of the Doomsday Contract begins very simply. It begins with a man, an Earthman to be precise, who is not a former professional tennis player and who, for a brief period in 1978, did not reach an ATP world ranking of 21. This Earthman is John Lloyd, a former BBC radio producer who, for a brief period in 1978, was credited as writer additional material on the Radio 4 comedy serial The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. He was a fellow ape descendant, Douglas Adams, who had asked for Lloyd's help in scripting the programme when a series of missed deadlines thudded past him, much like a volley of tennis balls indicating a player will progress no further than number 21 in a professional body's ranking system. Shortly thereafter, Douglas Adams became script editor on the BBC One television series Doctor Who, prompting Lloyd to submit a story treatment entitled The Doomsday Contract. This story saw the lead character of Doctor Who, who many confusingly maintain is not called Doctor Who, being asked to defend the planet Earth from claims of ownership by the evil Cosmegalon Corporation. Further details of said story are almost entirely prohibited from being retold here in deference to a common 21st century Earth anxiety known as spoilers. So acute did this anxiety become that media outlets adopted the practice of issuing non-spoilery reviews, in which a human journalist would access a story in advance of the populace but provide no further details, other than broad hints that, while not revealing any specifics, ensured the surprises contained therein were sufficiently delineated so as not to provoke any amazement. With this in mind, it's sufficient to say the Doomsday Contract contained courtroom scenes, the TARDIS in peril and, wait till you get to the bit with the smaller than you would expect killers from another dimension. In much the same way the world of professional tennis is replete with toweling and grunting, Lloyd toiled over redrafts of his story, but ultimately the Doomsday Contract did not make it to television. This was mostly because Lloyd had instead moved on to spearheading every single Earth comedy of merit that would appear over the next three decades. Sadly, this had little to no impact upon his standing with the Association of Tennis Professionals. Addendum is that 43 years on, that wholly remarkable company, Big Finish, certainly the most successful hour or creator to come out of the mutter spiral, adapted the Doomsday Contract for a new full cast audio version. In many of the more relaxed civilizations on the outer eastern rim of the galaxy, the release would come to be known as the highest evolutionary form of quality entertainment. Some would argue its success was, in no small part, thanks to three friendly words appended to all trailers announcing its existence. 